All right, tonight we're gonna to make barbecue ribs. And the neat thing about these ribs is we do them without a grill. I know um, some people don't have a grill or some people are intimidated by going outside and starting up, firing up the grill. These ribs you could do completely from the comfort of your own kitchen. Uh, it's a little time consuming. I think we baked them uh, like three and a half hours. So they take a long time, but um, again, all you need is an oven and very few ingredients. So if you're interested on uh, how to do the ribs, and again, these are just so tender. Let me just show you. I mean, look how tender that is. Mm -hmm. See how they're just falling off the bone like that? Yeah. The meat is so tender. Um, if you wanna know how to do this, um, just watch this and we'll show you how. We're gonna make pork ribs, and we thought it'd be good to do it now because um, uh, this time of year where people have uh, barbecues, it's a, a good food to uh, serve when you're having people over, you have guests, or if you're going somewhere, you could bring some nice ribs. So we'll show you how uh, we do these. There's a few different ways to do them. The uh, way I'm gonna show you tonight is actually a no grill type barbecue ribs. You don't need to grill, you could do this all inside, indoors, uh, with the regular oven. So I have two racks of ribs, pork ribs. Um, beer, not to drink, but we're gonna cook with it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, barbecue sauce, brown sugar, and pineapple, and that's it. Um, now, you could make your own barbecue sauce. I've done that before, but it's uh, just a lot easier to use this. It's already made, and this is a really good uh, sauce um, to use. My favorite ever. Yeah, and um, the beer, what we're gonna do is cook these in beer first. So I cook the ribs in beer. Uh, once they're cooked, then we're gonna slow roast them in the oven. Right, step one, just take the ribs out of the packing and put them on a cutting board so we can slice them. Now this part will be up to you how big you're gonna want each um, rack of ribs. Um, I typically like three to four per whole uh, rack of ribs. And this one's a little on the small side, so I'm gonna do uh, three. And uh, you, you look uh, in between the bones, get a nice space there, and then you just cut. And that's one. And we'll come here. Okay, so this will be three nice serving sizes for the ribs. And we put them in a big pot. Same thing with the other rack. Okay, this one I cut in four. I get nice sizes. Just layered it in the pot. And now we're going to pour the beer in. Um, you could use any type of beer, I guess. Um, your favorite beer uh, would do because then whatever you have left over, you could just go ahead and drink. Um, I like using Killian's and I had some Killian's Irish Stout, so we'll go ahead and use this. But again, any beer you have will work. But I think the darker, the redder the beer, uh, the better. I ended up putting five bottles of beer in for two uh, racks of ribs. Put it on the stove top, and I put it on high, and we're gonna bring it to a, a boil, and then we're gonna cook it until it's all the way cooked through. Okay, it's been on the stove for about 30 minutes. It took 10 minutes to reach boiling, and then it boiled for about 20 minutes. Um, and so I turned off the heat, took it off the burner, and I'm gonna take them out of the pot. The only funny thing or funky thing about uh, this part of the, um, of, of the recipe is it kind of makes the kitchen smell a little, a little strange. It smells know? like a frat house in here. <laughs> It's not the most appetizing or appealing of smells um, or aromas, but um, it's a necessary uh, step. And we just take the ribs out and we put them in our baking pan. And the baking pan I'm um, using is one of the uh, disposable ones uh, that you could get from like the BJ's or Costco, the wholesale clubs. And it's really good to use uh, this type of pan for this recipe because um, It'd be really tough to clean the um, other pans. And this one's nice, you just fold it up and throw it out. 
And now we're going to take the barbecue sauce, and it's easier because we're going to use the whole bottle on this. Just take the top off so it'll pour out easier. And just start putting it on each one. And spread it out. Coat as much of it as you can. turn them over so the, uh, the rib side is up. You see how that curves up? It's going to be like a nice little pocket to hold the rest of the sauce. You see how that dents in a little? Mm -hmm. And I have the oven preheating at 325. Hmm. You're making Jinx's favorite thing. <laughs> yeah, she loves the ribs. She goes crazy. She's stolen a rib from me before. It's the weirdest thing. And <laughs> tried to run off with it? <laughs> yeah, she tried to run off with it. I don't know what it is about her, but this is her favorite thing to try to eat. And it's like, cats don't eat ribs. Let me be the first to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but our baby does. Yep. She's a rib eater. She gets very excited. The oven's preheated. Okay, use the whole bottle. And now I'm going to take the uh, second bottle and we're going to put about half of it on. Just sprinkle a little more because I coated them um, thoroughly the first time and I will just dab this on. Okay. Now get some of our brown sugar and we're going to cook this. I will uh, give you all the measurements on it, the exact measurements, but. Uh, we're just going to sprinkle this now on top. I had no idea you do this. No wonder I love these. <laughs> I had no idea you did that. Yeah, things you're learning when you come. I know. I in the kitchen. I just let you do your thing usually, and I'm learning so much. <laughs> she takes a break from her makeup. Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole other world. There's a whole other world out there. <laughs> the uh, sugar's on, and the last step is going to be the crushed pineapple. Just going to. Pour that on top. Some aluminum foil. And you don't want to seal this too tightly. Um, I like having, you see on the edge there, how there's like a little a space. Yeah, space on each side for the. Um, the heat and steam to, to oh come. okay so it's just see. loosely wrapped. Mm -hmm. now we put it in the oven mm -hmm. again at 325, and we're going to let it slow cook for two and a half hours. Oh wow, okay. That's covered, and in two and a half hours, we're going to come back, take it out, rebase them, and then cook it another hour uncovered. Wow, I didn't know it took so long. Yeah, we want uh, it cooking at a low heat because this is going to make it fall off the bone tender. Okay, it's been about two and a half hours. Let's take it out and check on it and turn them over. And that smell in the house, remember before of them cooking in the beer, the not so pleasant smell? It's going now. And replaced with a very aromatic and pleasing smell. Mm-hmm. Turn them over. I can tell they're already nice and very tender. Okay, I'm going to take some more of the sauce. That first bottle I had, I just turned upside down just to get as much out of it as we can. I'll take some more of Sweet Baby Ray's. in for about another 45 minutes to an hour uncovered. I'm going to put it in just like this now. Okay, and back in the oven. Okay, let's see how the ribs are doing. Okay. Very nice. Mm -hmm. I'll take them out. Put them up here. Now we 
have one final step. What I'm going to do is uh, take them from here and put them on this um, baking pan. sheet. Yeah, the baking sheet. Going to line it with tin foil, and then we're going to broil them. Oh. And the broiler, it sort of mimics what we would do on the grill because it gives it a nice charred coating on the outside. So we're going to broil them on one side, turn them over, broil them on the other side, and then we're done. Cool. Okay, now we're going to transfer them. We're going to use tongs, but be very careful because, like I said, they're very tender at this point because we want it to fall off the bone tender ribs. Well, they're at that point right now and they could break up. We just want to put them right on the platter. But again, be very careful. We don't want to break them. Okay, now we have the ribs on the platter. And again, we just want to um, char them a bit. So I have the um, rack on the very top uh, part. I'm going to put this in and we're going to put it on the broiler. And we're going to broil it for a few minutes, turn it over, put a little more sauce on and then broil again. Okay, they've been in just over two minutes. And see how nice and charred they are? Mm-hmm. And again, no grill. It's just been all on the stove. Oh, they're so tender. Oh, they are. They're like Again, bending over on the thing. And that's what you want. If you want fall off the bone tender ribs, this is it. And it's easy to do because if you don't have a grill or you don't want to go out and mess with that, you can do it right from the comfort of your own kitchen. And this will be the final step. So good. I know I could pull one off of this platter right now. Yeah, and everyone, she's having her blog sale in a few minutes, so I'm racing against the clock to have this done <laughs> so she could it before get, makeup mayhem starts. That's right. So she has the energy to go on with the sale. <laughs> <laughs> All right, put it back in in three more minutes. It'll be dinner time. All right, they've been in there about three minutes and it looks like they're done. So we'll take our tongs and again, very carefully, let's start lifting them out and putting them on the platter. <laughs> it yep. fell off, it it's fell tender. Off. That is tender. Okay, and here you have it, barbecue ribs.